sorry folks, it's been a bad couple of days. <laughs> been kind of been kind of sick. Again. I know. I know. I'm trying to recover. I believe I still am recovering. I do not know what in the world I have come down with. I believe it may be a regular fever. I believe it may be corona. It could be either of those. But in any case, I gotta try and get this you know, get some college football stuff out for y'all before these FCS quarterfinals start. And in about 30 minutes or so, we will see the first of these quarterfinals as North Dakota State hosts Sanford in the Fargo Dome. Now, you know, with this strong North Dakota State team, there have been some issues lately. No Hunter Lipke. He's done for the year. Some players have transferred out. And Sanford is looking is looking like they want to get an upset in. Michael Hears and Jay Stanton on the offensive side of the football for the Bulldogs. They gotta they gotta get it they gotta get it done. They gotta get it done. This is a Sanford team that can pass the ball around real quick and real easy. We all know North Dakota State has a strong defense, a strong running game, a really good old line. You know, all the things that have made them prime for late December and January runs nine of the last 11 years, they've won a title. We'll see, you know, we'll see if, you know, if Hears is able to go, but if not, Quincy Crittenden will also be able to go because he could do some things that Hears, you know, can't do, like run the ball very effectively. So we'll see what happens there. And then William and Mary is going up to up to Bozeman. Oh yes, Montana State, William and Mary. It's going to be interesting to see Darius Wilson, Bronson Yoder, you know, and company go up against Tommy Balot and his really good, really, just, just really, really good Bobcat defense. I mean, the weather is going to be terrible. The game is going to be very late at night. You know, that big sky after dark nonsense. You know, it's, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, I think. And, you know, there's going to be some things that William and Mary needs to do, which is really, you know, just keep Malat contained because he can run and he can throw. You know, again, the tribe have to keep him contained. That's the first thing, and they got to get points when they can. You know, because, again, with this defense, Calhan O'Reilly, Ty Okada, you know, a recipe for success is what the Bobcats have. And then you have the game that's on ESPN Plus on a Friday night, Sacramento. Why? UIW, Sacramento State. Why it's on a Friday night on ESPN Plus is my best guess, but I don't know. And with JG Kidd being Texas State's, you know, new coach, it only comes as a surprise that Troy Taylor has been connected to the Stanford job, along with the good old Jason Garrett. Oh, you know, I'm not I'm not exactly happy to hear the words Jason Garrett and head coach again, but it is what it is. And with Lindsey Scott Jr. at the helm, I mean, my goodness, this man has been just, he's been on a different level, 55 touchdown passes, 7 touchdown runs, then you add on guys like Marcus Cooper, and, and, the, and the guys, you know, over, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, it's going to be good, going to be good for the Cardinal. But they're going up against the Hornets, you know, again, Cam Skatebo, 
has just been on a tear, running the ball. Marshall Martin, we talked about. And Marte Nakmapu, you know, who's also been really, really good. Really, really good on the defensive side of the football. And the Hornets, you know, with their QB rotation, it's been really good for them so far. And we'll see if they can keep this up. But this is a UIW team that can score in bunches. And if Sac State can't keep up, oh boy, it's going to be something. It is going to be something. And then the last quarterfinal, which is Holy Cross in South Dakota State. Oh yes, the top seeded, you know, one loss Jackrabbits are going up against the undefeated Crusaders. And it'll be a it'll be the only quarterfinal that's a Saturday game, but with Matthew Sluka leading the Crusaders out, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, what Holy Cross can really do. Um they met in the playoffs, you know, you know, two seasons ago during the COVID year, and South Dakota State won that very easily. But this South Dakota State team feels different. <coughs> oh, excuse me. With Mark Gronowski, you know, just having the time of his life on the offensive side of the football, Isaiah Davis. Reese Winkleman on the defensive side, you know, the Missouri Valley champs, you know, just running over opponents and just, just, you know, making lives difficult for other teams, you know, like Delaware last week. They made Delaware's life pretty difficult in that game. And, you know, Stuka's is going to have to play his heart out in this game. The whole team for Holy Cross is going to have to play their hearts out in this game. Nobody believes Holy Cross can win this game. Does South Dakota State dominate like they have been all season long? Or does Holy Cross get that upset? We'll see. But a lot of people, including myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I feel like South Dakota State will take care of this pretty easily. Maybe North Dakota State will take care of Sanford pretty easily. But the other two games, definitely more of a toss-up. So we'll see. We'll see how the quarterfinals go. We'll see. Give me a second here. As I need to get get my trooper. Or rather, you know, get my soldier mentality on. If you catch my drift. And it is time. It's the saddest part of the regular season. The final game of the regular season before bowls begin in the FBS. But it's also one of the best parts, the Army-Navy game. And although both these teams can't get the Commander in Chiefs trophy, although both these teams are going bowling, although both these teams have had some difficult seasons, Pride, honor, and winning over the other team comes first. Singing second comes first. And Army, with Tahir Tyler leading leading the charge, you know, again, Army can get the 6-6, six six, but they can't go bowling. Um, Second best rushing offense in the country, you know. So that's gonna be that's gonna be something, you know. And then Navy, you know, Navy on the ground, been able to, you know, they've been able to, you know, run the ball. They're, they have the seventh ranked rushing offense, but it's not it's not as efficient. Um, really, the guy to watch. Or Navy is the fullback Daba Fofana, you know, and also McQuell Haywood, you know, although it seems like it's going to be Xavier Arline getting the ball. And with Army again, lots of rushers, Navy, lots of rushers, so it's going to come down to 
who's bigger in the trenches for this game. So we'll see who finds out who's going to win it all in this one. The over-under is 32 and a half at the moment. And I expect that to I expect that score to be pretty low. I mean, do you expect a whole lot of points in the Army Navy game? I I don't think so. But you never know with these games. I mean, the Army Navy game, I've watched it for the past decade, and I've enjoyed watching this game for the past decade, and I can't wait to watch another one on Saturday. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a good time with this one, folks. So, you know, keep in mind, have CS quarterfinals tonight, tomorrow. You know, you know, if the Holy Cross South Dakota State game gets bad, remember that game's only at noon. You know, if you don't want to sit and you know watch that, there's also some college basketball on. It's looking really intriguing that day. And then the Army Navy game at two, three Eastern. So gonna be gonna be gonna be a good day, you know, gonna be a good night, you know, going into the morning tomorrow and going into the Army Navy game. We'll be back with the recap of the FCS quarterfinals and the Army Navy game at the conclusion of the Army Navy game, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all later tonight. I gotta talk to the NFL because I forgot yesterday. And yeah. I'll see you all soon.